Hey class. Hey, happy Friday, y'all. You finally made it through your first week of online school. So I hope everything's going well for you. And I hope you got things figured out. If I can be of help in any way, just reach out to me and um, I'll see what I can do. Okay, so you completed your first um, Google Sheets um, spreadsheet. And a lot of you did very, very well. Some had, I mean, most of you had minor mistakes that we had to fix, but overall you did really, really well. Um, and the next assignment that I'm going to give to you is another Google Sheet. But before we actually do that Google Sheet, I just want to talk to you about budgeting in general. And the reason being is your next Google Sheet will be just that, creating a budget. And so I want you to understand budgets a little bit better before you put them into a spreadsheet. So if you look at my budget scenario worksheet here, I'm just going to start at the top. It says budgeting is an important skill, or important life skill, excuse me. Learning to manage your finances correctly will ensure that you have enough money to pay your monthly expenses and help prevent frivolous spending. So I've made a little scenario, or created a scenario here, that says you make $40,000 a year, so yearly. So think about that. It says on average, or actually not on average, what I should say is what do you make monthly? So if you take $40,000 and you divide that by 12 months, you're going to get uh, $3,333.33 $3, because you divided by 12. Now, that's what you would make monthly before any deductions, and we'll talk about that here in a few minutes. But if I got paid $3,333.33 for the month, if you read the next question, it says that I get paid twice a month. So if I got paid twice a month, then I would have to divide this by two because this is for my total for the month. So if I divide that by two, I'm looking at... $1,666.67. Now here we're talking about deductions. Deductions are things like health care insurance, taxes, that get deducted from your paycheck. Now I'm just using $550. It could be less, it could be more, depending on what you have coming out of your paycheck and how much money you make. So if I'm going to deduct $550, I would subtract $550 from the $1,666.67, which would give me $1,116.67. Now, if I get paid monthly, Okay, we already de determined that that was $3,333, but we divided that by two and then subtracted our deductions. So now this is really what I get paid for each paycheck. So if I get paid twice a month, I would multiply this by two, giving me $2,233.33. So really, this is what I would bring home. This is more likely what I would bring home instead of this here. This is your gross pay in a sense, what you make before taxes and deductions, and this is what you would net, what you actually get to take home and spend. So you want to figure this out before you even move out because you want to you want to create a budget to see if you're able to afford living on your own because you don't want to move out and then realize you can't afford it and now you have all these bills coming in that you can't pay. So all we're going to do at this point is move down and take our $2,233.33 and move it down here. So this is how much you have to work with. Everything you see here in a sense is an expense except savings account. I put it under expenses because you always want to allocate for savings just in case um, there is some type of um, emergency or maybe you want to even plan for a trip. You always want to put some money away. So anyway, getting back to budgeting, you make $2,233.33. Let's say that you're looking to rent an apartment for $700. And boys and girls, I'm not going to write on the lines because they're really small. I'm just going to write on the outside here. 
So $700 for rent. You've been looking at a place that costs about $700. You've asked around some of your friends or even your parents, hey, how much do you think water and sewage bill would cost? And you estimated about $60. Your car insurance, let's pretend that's about $100. It might be more. Uh, but we're just, pre we're, this is a budget and this is a scenario. So we're just pretending. Um, let's say you have a car payment that's $350. We'll say your electric bill is about $50. Um, your student loan, let's say you have student loan, that's about $300. And cable, let's say you pay about $80. And I know some of you would probably say, oh, Netflix. It'd be cheaper, right? We're, this is just one scenario. Um, cell phone bill, let's say that's about $75. Uh, credit card, let's say you have credit card. Let's say you only have one credit card, so it's $25. And let's say that you're going to put away $100 in savings. So when I add all of these up, $1,840. $1,840 is how much I'm budgeting to spend. I'm estimating that these would, this is how much each one of these um, bills would cost me. So my total, total monthly bills, again, is $1,840. Money left to spend after bills are paid. Well, how do you figure that out? Well, if you take a look at what you make per month, which is this $2,233.33, you'll subtract $1,840 because this is monthly and this is monthly as well. So it's these are the same. So you can do that. When you take these two and you subtract them, that means you get $393.33 excuse me, left to spend. Now you think, oh, I have money left over, I can move out. But what you have to understand is, and I noted that right here, you gotta consider other things. You paid all these bills, but you have to consider your food bill, which I didn't put in there. And I purposely left that out because a lot of people forget about that. You gotta think about, okay, how much are you going to spend each week on groceries? And if you're like, well, I'm just gonna buy cheap stuff, that's fine totally fine, but do you still have enough money left over? I apologize for that, you guys. Enough money left over uh, for personal hygiene, for any leisure activities. Don't you want to go out? And if you have a car, you need gas. And if you're driving to and from work, which a lot of us are not doing now, but pre-pandemic, back and forth to work, how much does it take to fill up your gas tank? So that $393 is probably going to go fast during the month when you have to eat, put gas in your car, and when you go, want to go out and have some fun. Now it says groceries and personal hygiene other. So I said, don't forget about these things. Toothpaste, toilet paper, shampoo, soap, laundry detergent, in addition to your actual food items. So let's say we're just going to pretend that we're going to spend $250 on those things. $250. So if you think about this, you're spending $250 of that $393 or $393.33. So you barely now have any money left over um, for the remainder of the month if you spend $250 on groceries. You have a little less than $150. You have like $143.33 left. So is that enough for you to go out and have some fun? Uh, for any emergencies. I mean, yeah, you allocated $100 for a saving, put it, put away in savings, but that's only $143 left in general. And again, you still have to think about that gas for your car. So if you look down here, and I apologize for that, and it says, what else could you change or what other possible scenarios could you think of to help your budget, to help you budget more effectively to afford all your needs and wants? So could you eliminate credit card debt? Sure, but you have to pay it off first. Could you find a different car? Sure, but that takes some time and research. And do you need a reliable car? So you might say, hey, I need a reliable car. I don't want to get a very old car where I have to worry about it breaking down all the time. So these are things that you need to think about. And could your problem really be solved by just grabbing a roommate 
And when I say grabbing your roommate, ask if somebody wants to move out with you. But you have to remember then you're sharing space with someone. And if your name is on a lease and you don't have their name on a lease and they want to move out, you're responsible for all the bills. So you have to think about those things. Now it says, think about some other things that we need from time to time that were not considered in the scenario. Although we may not need these items on a regular basis, we eventually have to budget for them. So also think about careers that have possibly, that have the possibility to provide higher earnings. But remember, those student loans. Now, some additional things that I want to talk to you about. When you're budgeting, you should think about, let me erase this real quick, the rule of thumb when it comes to budgeting. And the rule of thumb is 50, 30, 20. Okay. 50 meaning 50%. So I'll put percent up here. So you remember these all percentage. You should spend no more than 50% on expenses. The second rule of thumb is you should spend no more then 30% on what I call fun stuff, leisure activities, going out to eat, all that. And the last one, 20%, you should put away in savings. So if and when you decide to move out, know this budget rule, 50, 30, 20, and then apply it. In my next short video, we're gonna take a look at the budget scenario that we did here and apply it to the 50, 30, 20.